Okay, hello guys. So, uh, continuing with my This Is Not Anatomy videos progress, I'm going to show you two more methods that I've used during this year and tips and thoughts that occurred to me while I was doing it. And maybe these methods will work for you and it will help you to improve your anatomy skills because definitely anatomy is one of two the hardest things for me in drawing. But in this case they are the hardest but also the most fascinating so anatomy huh when you look at all masters painting do you wonder will you ever be or are you able to do something like that like i was <laughs> i was pretentious enough to think that if i would choose and copy couple or dozen times one of these works i will get the same result and of course I grew up and after hundreds of hours put into practice and search, I say that there is a lot more than just knowing and seeing which part sticks where. Because humans are the living things and in every moment, moment? In every moment, in every part of them there is life. But to capture the life I need to know what is the human, what is underneath the human. <laughs> And I'm not sure even if one of my drawings has that life in them, but I definitely got better through this past year in anatomy and right now I see the path that can bring me there. So I started to learn anatomy with drawing stick figures and you can check this about this in the previous video. This is not an anatomy tutorial, which I will link below because I still find a little bit of wisdom there. But even uh, then I was doing some of the sketches on my own from references on the Pinterest and the references from the fashion look books. Like for example, I used the Wild Fox website because I found their look books really pretty. And still they were just looking all too short, too long, just not right. They felt broken. And after that I've tried a lot of other different methods and it was a long long way but jumping into conclusions i want to share a few tips that helped me and maybe will be helpful for you so first you saw me going through a4 papers and pages of practice anatomy sketches there was no color there no clothes and even no faces on, on most of them because there is no reason to make wrong drawings look pretty with unimportant details because if you were will spot a lie it's like cheating on exams you may get a good grade but it will be useless and who are you cheating yourself so learning anatomy means really putting some work into it and not making sketches look pretty but making them look great second tip is to use basic supplies for basic purposes like pen and pencil. Drawing with pen will help you to develop clean line and be aware of each and every little mistake, but the con of it may be the stiffness of drawing and no way to the line. Pencil on the other hand will help you to learn how to use pressure to your profit and to develop gesture and flowiness of the lines with time. But the con is that you will learn a bit slower as you know on the back of your mind that all mistakes can be erased. The next step is to limit yourself in time. Don't spend 15 minutes on one sketch. The best source for me is the Crocky's Cafe. You can use the websites like One Minute Post or others, but I feel like the video is more restricting in time. And I don't know, it feels like more real, like you're actually drawing a real person in front of you and also if you will think that you need to spend only 30 minutes a day to practice anatomy you won't be that discouraged and maybe lazy maybe you won't even look forward to it for me it's just a practice or like a warm-up i do it not because i like to do it more than everything else but because i know that it's needed to make everything else look better Time restrictions also help to focus on pose and get it right. It teaches you to train and trust your eyes because mind thinks too much. And mind is quicker than our hands already, so we artists need to teach our hands to keep up with it. 
And obviously I'm not doing this practice every day because I'm too lazy, but I do it as often as I can because I know that it is important. Some of you mentioned before that proportions is one of your biggest struggles and I completely agree and get you on this. If you're working with thymy realistic anatomy, proportions are rarely mistake for style, more for a mistake and lack of knowledge. If you will look closely, you will notice that I do two layers of sketch because First is to put general shapes and second one to define them. So already on the first raw light sketch I can see and redraw the wrong parts. And also doing the first sketch I tried different approaches. Like I got into habit to mark the head first, but I recently noticed that marking where the torso and pelvis go first gave me the best idea of other body parts proportions. So I would suggest start to first of all drawing the overall shape for pelvis and torso and then work on the other parts. And when I define these sketches, I also start with different parts, like something I, sometimes I have enough time to define the whole pose and at other times I focus my attention on legs or torso curves or the way how neck and shoulders work together. To actually make this first raw sketch and help me to outline the whole figure, I use shapes. I heard people use triangles for men and circles for women, but I actually use curvy circular figures for everything, so you just need to find your own shapes. Neck was quite a weak point for me and I was always forgetting about it on the second sketch. So then I started just adding a small circle for neck to the first raw sketch and I think that that helped me quite as well and I think that with time I'll be able to draw without the even raw sketch underneath, like only with one layer. But when I say with time, I mean like time and practice, but I want to point out that time and practice means not that I will draw anatomy practice for 24-7 for two months and I will get there faster. Because I think that what really helped me in improving my skills is that I took rest from each of these from time to time and that I drew other stuff as well. And for instance, drawing landscapes for me helped me to maintain the sense of perspective and proportions or even to develop that and the sketches of the birds and faces improved my lines and overall flowiness of my drawings. And the next step will be to limit yourself in number of drawings. For this purpose, One Hundred Things Challenge worked out just perfectly. I started by doing 100 hands each day, like 10 sketches, then feet and mentors, and then moved to 100 couples challenge, because at that moment I already could draw a figure, figure but not two figures interacting with each other. Only I would not suggest you to keep up these challenges right after another as I did because I got really tired and nervous each time I got back. I just really wanted to get it done and I know that I talked that about taking breaks and I did take a breaks but inside of the challenge. I mean like I would finish 100 hands and then draw a 10 feet and then take break. And it just doesn't work like that because on the back of my mind I know I knew that I needed to get back to this and you know finish it. So if you really want to try these challenges, just take breaks in the meantime. And obviously you can use and change this challenge to your preference. So it can be not 100 hand but 100 hands at different angles like you know, actually, I want to share my list of ideas for this challenge, so maybe you will find something interesting for yourself. In my list, I've included sculptures, head angles, neck and shoulders, um, dance poses, outfits, faces, emotions and characters. So these ones will help you to develop better like human anatomy skills, but you can bend this challenge however you want to suit your needs. <laughs> Sounds like a line from the Game of Thrones. Anyway, and the last method that you won't see here, but you will see in my sketchbooks, uh, is redrawing from anatomy books, famous paintings and sculptures.
I will put a few of them into the description box and for painters I would suggest old masters because their anatomy is insane. As for sculptures, old Roman and Greek one will serve as a good reference and I would say go to museums in your city center but depending on where you live you may not find them in your city and I mean look at me. I live among sculptures and museums and I haven't trod them even once. So, so what I do do, I take photos every time I travel and I also created a Pinterest board and I draw them in the comfort of my own home later. It is also an option which I want to change but now that is it. So just find a good references and draw from them. And a curious fact for those who don't like to work hard. Studying anatomy is much easier than just drawing what you want. Because in anatomy practice you have a clear path and a goal to reach. And you know exactly whenever you did good or bad. You don't need to come up with things or decide where to end the drawing or use your creative energy. Only observe and draw what you see. So whenever you feel like you don't want to draw or you're in a bad mood or you're stressed out, do anatomy. Because you don't need to do art piece out of these studies. And if you are in a bad mood, it really helps to get out all of the thoughts, all of the bad thoughts and concentrate on the task. Okay, guys, that is it what I've got for today. Hope that was in any way helpful for you. I will keep updating you on my anatomy progress, but thank you so much for watching and liking and subscribing and commenting because it warms my heart really, really, really. And sorry that I'm here with you right now in my PJs and with bare face, but I really did not feel like putting anything on today. So yes, I uh, hope to see you really, really soon. Until the next time, keep arting, keep creating, keep sketching, keep doing what you love and carry on.